Good morning, everybody. My name is Lorenzo Stasi, and today we'll present you an high efficiency and fast photon number resolving SNSPD. This work has been conducted at ID Quantique in collaboration with the University of Geneva under the supervision of Hugo Zbinden and Felix Poussire. The need for excellent PNR detector has been continually growing in the last decades in several fields of quantum optics. For example, in order to obtain a stream of two single photons for quantum computation application, one could rely on a multi-array of uh, SPDC sources. In this case, the pumping power of the laser should be um, very strong and in order to have a higher uh, probability of generating a single photon pair. But what we could happen is that also multi-photon pair event could be generated. Therefore, by employing a PNR detector, we could be able to filter out those event, and in the end, we could end up with just a true uh, stream of single photon. Of course, also linear optin quantum computation would need very good PNR detectors in order to assess the final photon number state at the end of the quantum computation operation. Lastly, also quantum metrology would benefit from uh, PNR detectors in order to assess uh, the purity of uh, single photon sources or the photon number state produced by more exotic quantum systems. Transition edge sensor has been proved to be an excellent PNR detector technology. They consist in a tiny slab of superconducting material, which operate at the transition region between the superconducting and the resistive uh, state. When photons are absorbed by the detector, a different voltage pulse shape will be produced. And by analyzing the area under the curve, it is possible to retrieve the photon number state. TES has been proved to possess a very high efficiency and low dark counts rate. But however, they, they show several drawbacks. First of all, they display a very high jitter, tens of nanoseconds, a very long recovery time of the order of microsecond, and they need to be operated at extremely low temperature which increase the complexity and the dimension of the cryogenic system. Lastly, they also need a squid readout that increase the complexity on the overall system. That's why I would like to talk about a different approach that exploit superconducting nanowire single photon detectors. SNSPD consists in a meander nanowire shaped, closely biased to the critical car. When a photon is absorbed by the nanowire, Cooper pairs are broken and the resistive region is formed. Then this region is, it is expanding up to the point where the entire cross section is resistive and then the current leaves the, leave the nanowire and it goes into the readout circuit when we can observe a pulse. Then the nanowire has the time to cool down again, becoming a superconductive again, and then it is ready to detect another photon. SNSPD has been proved to possess a very high efficiency and low dark count rate comparable to TS detector, but they outperform them both in terms of jitter, only tens of picoseconds, and fast recover time, only tens of nanoseconds. Furthermore, they operate in temperatures much higher, therefore, the complexity on the cryogenic system is strongly reduced. However, a single SNSPD do not possess the same PNR capability that TES does. And therefore, to achieve a higher uh, degree of resolution, we need to approach a different uh, architecture, which usually consists in multi-pixel array scheme. One of them can be realized with uh, putting several nanowire in parallel electrically connected. In such a way, only one cable is needed to bias the, the overall detector, and only one coaxial cable is needed to read out the signal, which strongly reduces the heat impact on the cold stage of the cryostat. Furthermore, since the parallel uh, detector occupy the same area of a single SNSPD, uh, each nanowire is much shorter, and therefore it allows for faster recovery time and high counting rate. However, 
if the parallel SNSPD is not designed in an optimal way, there can be some drawbacks. First is that after one of the pixels have clicked, the current is going to be redistributed among the other nanowire. And what could happen is that the current exceed the, the critical current and therefore it's going to switch to the resistive state leading to a cascading effect that in the end can bring the overall detector into a latching state altering the PNR statistic. Also, uh, the detector can suffer of thermal cross-talk. Namely, after one pixel is uh, clicked, the heat that it generates can uh, propagate towards the adhesion pixel, making them turn into resistive state again. And we can see here, first order, second order thermal cross-talk. We came up with a novel architecture that uh, is able to avoid electrical cross-talk in parallel SNSPD. We still have small nanowire connected in parallel under the, um, under the light, under the exposed area, we here represented in red, and the number of nanowire will give the corresponding PNR capability. Then we have connected in parallel several nanowire, which are not exposed to the light, and they have the task to accept most of the redistributed current such that all the nanowire that are exposed to light, they will never turn resistive. And in such a way, the electronic cross-talk and latching could be prevented. Furthermore, we also optimized the space between the nanowire in such a way that the thermal cross-talk can be almost negligible. Here you can see an oscilloscope trace of a four pixel PNA parallel SNSPD. It is clear the photon number resolution capability, which is given, as you can see, by the four different peaks that you can observe on the scope. Furthermore, it is very easy to perform a counting statistic experiment which can, with those kind of detector because it's simply needed to send the pulse, the, the voltage pulse to a resistive splitter, and then by applying different voltage threshold correspond to one, two, three, and four photon event to a counting machine. And then we can collect histograms. Parallel SNSPD has been proved to possess a very high efficiency, more than 90%, with low dark count uh, rate, only tens of the count per second at the telecommunication wavelength. As I was saying before, since the pixels are much shorter than a conventional SNSPD, here we can see that the detector is back at full efficiency in only 40 nanoseconds. But the most interesting feature is that after only 10 nanoseconds, the overall detector is already possess 60% of nominal efficiency. And this is due to the fact that after one pixel have clicked, there are still all the, ad the other pixels that remain active and then can detect the new incoming photos. This measurement has been performed with an autocorrelation method in which we acquire the probability distribution with the time between the two detections, and then we correct in the, with the exponential distribution time between the photos in order to retrieve the final curve. Another important feature of parallel SNSPD is their timing jitter. As we can see, parallel SNSPD they are able to keep the Gaussian shape and the full width of maximum remains in the tens of picoseconds, showing how our design does not affect entirely the jitter. But when we are dealing with PNR detectors, we would like to be able to answer the following question. What is the probability of detecting N photons when N photons are sent on the device? Namely, we would like to be able to connect the photon counting statistic of the detector with the incoming light statistic that we are sending on the device. These two quantities are connected by the probability that the detector generate an n-click when m photons are arriving on it. 
we develop a mathematical model in, that is able to describe all of these uh, probability elements. And each element is constructing by using only the single pixel efficiency. And by efficiency, I mean both the product from the internal quantum efficiency and the geometrical coupling between the fiber and the pixel itself. In such a way, we do not put any constraint on the special light distribution and neither on the pixel efficiency. Therefore, we take into account a different uh, illumination for each pixels and also take into account possible uh, disuniformity that are happening during the nanofabrication process that can lead to difference in quantum internal efficiencies between the, between the pixels. Lastly, then we evaluate all the possible configuration for a specific event. Hence, how many photons can end up on uh, which pixel and uh, which pixel is going to, gen to absorb the photons generating a click. Since we do not have direct access to the pixel efficiencies, since they are connected in parallel, we, do, we needed to do a, a step more. So we shine light on the detector with known statistic, and we employ the Poissonian light with a specific mean photon number per pulse. Then we collect the photon number distribution generated by the detector, and then we run an optimization algorithm that aim to find the pixel efficiencies that means minimize the Euclidean norm. Such method is much faster with respect to a quantum tomography approach that required, because it required only one set of data rather than a lot as quantum tomography does. And also it can give insight on the pixel efficiencies value. Here I reported the pixel efficiency for the detector that I will show you since now, and from the, the values, we can, um, we can see that uh, they perfectly reflect the Gaussian, uh, light, the Gaussian distribution of light in single mode fiber. In fact, the outer pixel possess a very low efficiency because they almost receive no light. Furthermore, since the efficiency are not perfectly symmetric, we can assume that there is a little misalignment between in the fiber and the detector itself. And this information can only be accessed through our method and not from quantum tomography. After we have retrieved the pixel efficiency, we, we can then construct the, the matrix and then we can extract the fidelity probabilities, namely the probability to um, correctly evaluate a photo number set. So we detect one photon with 92% probability, which is in agreement with what I've shown you before, meaning that the model is consistent with the previous measure. We correctly evaluate a two photon number state with almost 50% probability, but then uh, the fidelity probability start to drop. And this is mostly due to the fact that it becomes harder and harder uh, to have photons that are splitted across the entire detector, and it is much more probable that instead two photons end up on the same pixel, and then we cannot resolve those kind of events. We also evaluate the possibility to retrieve the light uh, statistic that we are sending, namely S of M. To do that, we characterize our detector, so we obtain our P matrix, then we shine our unknown light and we collect the photon number distribution probability that our detector generates. And then in order to retrieve SM, we need to invert this equation. In order to do that, P has to be a square matrix in order to be invertible. Plus uh, to do that, we have to neglect all the photon number event that have a number of photons which is greater than the number of pixels. But by doing this uh, truncation, we are only able to reconstruct uh, uh, light uh, statistic in which those events are neglected, are negligible. Uh, here I reported uh, reconst um, reconstructed input from uh, uh, Poissonian light with three different mean photon number per pulse. 
As you can see, as long as the mean photopon number remains low, like 0 0.1 and 0 0.5, there is a very good agreement between the theoretical expected values and the one that we are uh, reconstructing because five, six, and uh, photon number event are negligible and they will never occur. But as soon as the mean photon number per pass starts to increase and then those kind of events are not negligible anymore, we can see that uh, we started to, devi to deviate from the theoretical value. This is uh, not uh, a defect of our model, but rather of the detector that uh, saturates when uh, those kind of events are occurring and therefore to uh, increase the range of uh, possible input reconstruction. What we would need to do is to increase the number of pixels within the parallel detector. We also are uh, uh, currently working on uh, the implementation of a parallel SNSPD in order to uh, have measure a better heralding second order autocorrelation function. As you can see here in the setup, we are using an SPDC sources to produce photon pairs, single photon pairs, which are then divided by mean of a polarizer beam splitter. One photon is sent to a 50, 50 beam splitter and then to single pixel SNSPD. And then the other photon is instead sent to the parallel SNSPD, which then it will produce a, a voltage pulse that is then split into two. And then we applied two different voltage thresholds, one corresponding to one photon event and one corresponding to two or more photon events. In such a way, what we aim to do is to filter out every time we have a multi-photon um, multi pair that has been generated in order to prove that a G2 uh, value could achievable could be important. And indeed, these are the results. So the blue curve is the G2, the added G2 measurement that we performed, taking into account all the events and the red curve instead is uh, the, uh, the, the configuration in which we have uh, disregarded all the events in which the PNR detector have registered uh, a, two, a two photon event or more. As you can see, we can have almost a 30% reduction in G2 and um, for the same mean photon number pulse, but you can also observe that uh, for the same G2 value, we can um, have a higher mean photon number per pulse, which in terms means a higher pump um, pump value, which means, means a higher generation rate. This work has been conducted at, uh, in, um, in collaboration with uh, Patrick Aspar, Tiffany Bridges, and Rob Tew from the group of applied physics of the University of Geneva, and these are just preliminary results. In conclusion, I show you that high efficiency PNR SNSPD can be a promising alternative to TES detector when fast operation applications are needed. They display a very fast recovery time and a very good time jitter comparable to a single pixel SNSPD. Uh, furthermore, we have developed a model that is able to describe the multi-photon detection probability, and it's much faster than a quantum tomography approach, and our model can be applied to any multi-pixel array scheme. We also show that we are able to retrieve the light uh, statistic of an unknown source, and, those, and we have been using our parallel SNSPD to prove that the G2 can be reduced. As I was saying before, the main limitation is in our way that we reconstruct the, the light statistic of the source we're using because we are limited by the number of pixels that we have in our detector. In fact, we are, we are already working into scaling up the number of pixels and this will also improve the, the fidelity probabilities since we will have less and less probability that two photons will end up on the same pixel. With that, I would like uh, to thank you, Giovanni Resta, for useful this discussion, and I thank you for your attention.